Well, we're really pleased to welcome Sandy Jones Kaminsky to the show, and I'm going to get this right. Thanks, she's a self-described networking enthusiast, and I'd be willing to say she's an expert at it, too, <laughs> and an HR industry executive, and is author of the book, I'm at a networking event, now what, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she's here to help us improve our networking skills. Sandy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Steve. I'm happy to be here. So tell us about yourself. I don't think you just came out of the shoot knowing you're going to be a networking expert. What, uh, what do you do, and what path did you take to getting? There. Well, so what I do now is I um, am actually working, I'm giving a shot at the recruiting industry because it occurred to me that maybe it was time I started getting paid for all this connecting that I do no. in my what? life, <laughs> which I love to do it, but it, be it came time that maybe I should use all those skills and see what I could do with them uh, in a more professional way. Not that I didn't use them in other parts of my career, but really focused on connecting people to opportunities and and clients to talent, right? So I'm doing that for a company called Filter right now in San Francisco. But I'm also still uh, out there promoting my book, but also trying to really uh, change people's perspective about networking and, and try and help people get over some of the fear or the negative uh, stigma that it has and to get some of the reluctant networkers out there to get out there and do better. So that's a big part of what I do as well right now is I do speaking engagements and interviews and um, workshops and things like that, webinars. So that's... How did you How did you get into networking to begin with though? I mean how... Yeah. Did you just naturally do it yourself and say this isn't working right so I gotta change this around? Well it's or? weird. I really have given this a lot of thought because this question has come up to me before and I started thinking about it and realized that when I was little I did this. When I was a kid, I was always interested in getting all my friends together. I wanted <laughs> everyone to play together and I wanted to be able to be with all my friends at the same time and to have sleepovers and you know parties on the front lawn or in our pool in the yard or whatever it was. Like I liked everyone to be in a group and I wanted all these people that I really liked and had fun with to play nice together. <laughs> so. When I really thought about that, that's something that's been a common theme in my, my life and in my career, definitely. And I think early in my career, I started hiring people very quickly. I worked for a startup mm -hmm. and I was tasked with hiring like 20, 30 people in an 18 month period. And going through that process and getting to interview people and develop skills to identify what people wanted to do with what opportunities existed in our company, the company I was working for, and realized I really enjoyed that and I actually had an affinity for it, that it was something I was fairly good at, matching people to the right work or the right sort of environment or stress level, right, because there are different jobs. So then as my career progressed, I was always managing people and having to figure out how to best utilize their skills and talents and get them doing the best work they could and then and that's all just got to do with really paying attention and listening to people and mm -hmm. understanding and that's a big part of networking is being a good listener right this is there's a great guy kawasaki quote about the mark of a good conversationalist is someone who can listen more than talk and thus good schmoozers are good listeners not mm -hmm. good talkers they they really pay attention and they're able to help I've actually people. had some people tell me I'm interesting and I haven't told them anything about myself I just asked them questions right. how could I be interesting right. when I just said oh tell me more about yeah. what you do well they found you interesting oh, I, that you were I interested guess. in them probably so so um let's define networking Okay. and then also say why it's so crucial. Right. So what is the definition of networking for you? So networking to me is the idea of going out and making an effort to exchange information, knowledge, ideas, contacts with someone else. It can happen at an event, it can happen on an airplane, it could happen in line at the post office, it could happen you know, before a conference starts that you sit next to somebody and you just you start talking to them and you're trying to find out what made them come to the event and and you're just learning and you're learning why they're there because maybe you know why were you in Chicago what brought you to Chicago this mm -hmm. trip right mm -hmm. there's always this idea of finding out what's going on with someone's life like what are they working on what do they need help with and then 
you, you hear people talk and you say, you know what, I know somebody at CBS. I can maybe get you an introduction there. They would probably be interested in that program. You never know who you're sitting by. Right? That's right. And that's a big part of what I, my focus is in networking is definitely more about quality versus quantity that don't dismiss people so quickly. I'm not a big fan of speed networking because mm -hmm. I just think that it's, it's the antithesis of what I think is effective. That when you dismiss people immediately and don't take the time to get to know them and find out who they are and what they need help with and build a relationship, you never know who they know. I mean, I have a great story about a friend who befriended someone and it turned out the woman's husband was the VP of HR at Microsoft. And, wow. you know, there it was, and they built this relationship and then it was so easy. It was the wife saying, let me introduce you to my husband. You've got to meet. He would right. probably love to get you in right. there. And it, and it didn't take long and it was genuine. You know, they developed a relationship and a friendship. But it, it was one of those things where she met her, you know, sitting next to her at a luncheon or something and mm -hmm. might have dismissed her because she looked like, you know, she was dabbling in marketing only part-time or something. So you're answering the question as to why it's important. It can lead yes. directly to one hell of a job. Totally. And, and, <laughs> and build a, con a solid connection with other people and support. Yes. And also the idea that today, the size of your network matters. A lot of employers look at that. I mean, I can't tell you how often I've seen in job descriptions, uh, job postings that must have LinkedIn connections 300 or higher. Really? Yeah. Boy, I just made it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's really, it's become sort of this benchmark for are you well connected? And, wow. you know, a healthy size network of contacts and resources implies some level of competency and skill at developing relationships and having access to the resources you're going to need, right, to get your job done. Mm -hmm. So it's become much more important and it's a mark of success that you're successful at building relationships with people. So, I mean, that to me is a huge part of it. I mean, I know, you know, many of the consulting gigs I've gotten over the years in business development or marketing and even this job that I have now at Filter came about because of the size of my network yeah. and that it was the visibility that I clearly had. That's what they were interested in. So so um, let's uh, show the audience your book okay. since uh, I'm at a networking event now. I love that now what with three question marks. <laughs> well, uh, we'll see how we do this, but why don't yeah. you tell the audience what they're going to get to see in the book? Well, uh, so the book is really to try and help people identify and practice the skills that you need to be have an effective and quality experience at a networking event, right? And whenever I say that title, people just laugh because they know, I mean, <laughs> they, they there's so many way. people who feel that way. And, and what do I really do now to make the most of this time? And that's what the book is about. It's, it, the book was written, I'm really candid about this, it was written out of frustration because I was sort of frustrated with how many people I w were encountering that really weren't comfortable with it. and they were having a bad experience and it showed and it affected the way they interacted with people and I really went with the intention I always go to these events with the intention of offering help to someone else and when you really want to try and help somebody but they're so busy launching in their into their canned elevator speech or whatever yeah I can't even get there like I can't I just need them to calm down and tell me well what made you come here tonight because I have this theory that Nobody goes to a networking event just for fun, right? Otherwise, <laughs> they, would, they wouldn't have paid for parking or a sitter or paid the registration. I mean, there's a reason they're going there. And if we could all just get to the, what is the ask? What is the need? Everybody can calm down and we can have Nobody a better conversation, <laughs> right? And, and I say it's like, otherwise you would have stayed home and watched what, Dancing with the Stars or something. You wouldn't be there. So... Why are you here? Let's yeah, with, find with out. With some of those elevator pitch, uh, speeches, I don't know if I'd want to be in the elevator.